The last type of authentication I like to talk with you about is the property-based authentication. This is something pretty new in Identity Manager. Property-based authentication works in a very interesting way. First of all, property-based authentication is typically a single sign-on thing. Secondly, this type of authentication allows you very easy to authentify. Let me have an example. There is an Active Directory account. You are signed in with that on your workstation and this information goes into the One Identity Manager. This is a single sign-on thing. The whole thing that gets determined is your Active Directory account. With the help of this Active Directory account, you can determine your person like we saw that before in some other samples. This time on this person, there is a specific field configured and this field tells you which Active Directory account is allowed to sign in the One Identity Manager. If this is the same account you are logged in with, then pretty well you get the permission situation of the system user which is assigned to your person object. If this is another Active Directory account, for example because you are acting with your administrative account right now, you will not get your access in Identity Manager because the system says this is an account that is not configured on that person object for you. A complete different use case of this is, for example, to use the whole thing for an automated logging for a machine-to-machine -machine communication. Remember what happens if you connect to one identity manager using a REST API. In the REST API, you have as well to define a specific system user who is allowed to log in. And at the end, you need then to authentify yourself. If you use now the option to use the property-based authentication on the system user level, you can just configure this specific Active Directory account on the system user. That means on the system user, you will as well insert the name of that specific Active Directory account, which is the system user, our REST service gets accessed. And with that, automatically with single sign on the REST API is able to identify and to get data or to work with the identity manager in a very, in a very comfortable way without any additional exchange of passwords and credential information. Now I like to show you how property-based login works. Therefore, I will use the authenticator user account. Here it is, user account. It's a, the authenticator name. It's named QER account. And what this authenticator does, it just uses the identity object and a specific Active Directory account, which is assigned to the identity object for a single sign-on and will give me some system user permissions. That means it will use the system, role, system user as a role to get permissions assigned. To show you the data situation, I switch to the manager. I will do it with my Hervik account. The reason for is my Hervik account, as you can see, has assigned the domain administrator. And the domain administrator is exactly the account I'm signed in here with. So if you see, uh, the user domain, it is IAM. If you see the username, it is administrator. So it is the IAM administrator account. I step back to my manager. In the manager, I select the master data of my Herbic Abelay object. I step to the miscellaneous tab. First thing to control here is a system user just assigned. This will be my permission situation. There is as well a password set, but this is not important. But what I have to do now is I have to configure a login. So I click on plus, I type IAM, which is my domain, and then administrator, which is here uh, the specific account. I store the complete thing. And with that, I only have database to close the connection. I have say database new connection. This time I need the authenticator as we know user account here we are it is a single sign-on because it takes now the signed in user from the workstation i click on connect i get a connect here's my full dialogue if i just look into that specific one here i can see hervic system user is assigned which is pretty good and it is the authenticator user account and to show you that this will not work with this specific entry, I just select my user object. Here we are, this is Hervik. I step to the Michelangelo sub, here we are. And I delete that logging from the list, so there is no logging assigned. I just click save. 
I create a new connection. Here we are, user account, it's selected, it's a single sign-on and this time I get just an error message that says this user is not uh, authorized to use this database and with that you can see it is just the property we set that allows me to sign in and to get the permissions of the assigned system user. Knowing all of this about authentication modules, we can now go into an overview and try to differentiate all of these One Identity Manager authentication modules. Starts with the account-based system user. As seen, the account-based system user is an account that allows single sign-on and will assign you as a system user. Active Directory user account is something that allows you to assign with an Active Directory account information to use single sign-on and to assign permissions you get from a system user as well. The same thing for role-based, but this time you will not get your permissions from a system user. You will get it out of a One Identity Manager application role membership and all the permission groups assigned to these roles. Active Directory user account dynamic it's doing the same, but this time you will get your information from a system user, which is configured with the help of an XML file. Manual input, it's not a single sign-on. Here you have to enter credential information into a login. Here you have to enter credential information into a login mask. The same for manual input role-based for Active Directory. This time it is the role-based authenticator, but with a login mask in front where you can type in your credentials. Component authenticator, it's one of them that is used to register components. You have nothing to do with that. You cannot use it for front ends. It is just there for the system. The same for the crawler who helps the indexer to get the information he needs. Data governance authenticator. It's a poor Active Directory authenticator and allows you to authenticate against Active Directory and at the end to get permissions in Identity Manager. All the stuff around employee uses the person object in Identity Manager just to get permissions. Employee itself, it's a login mask where you can enter your credentials. Dynamic will use the XML file to configure and Employee Role-based uses at the end the role membership instead of the assigned system user the employee without Role-based will use. Generic single sign-on Role-based, it's a Role-based authentication, but this time you can determine the properties you will use to identify your accounts. HTTP header information, it's something that is only used from the web portal. It takes out of the HTTP header for the website the information it needs and can role-based or just system user-based assign permissions to particular identities. LDAP user account, dynamic, it's something that uses XML that supports single sign-on and it uses an LDAP to sign in. OAuth, it's using certification-based authentication and with a search, you will get access to the One Identity Manager on the one hand side, system user assignment based, and on the other hand side, role based like before. Synchronization Authenticator has its own login he uses typically for synchronization projects. System user, it's a manual login in difference to the account based system user, and you have to enter your login credentials and system user. User account and user account role based uses a specific property on the person object that authenticates specific Active Directory accounts for specific users. Web agent authentication at the end, it's something the web uses and it uses this to access the database without being logged in. <laughs>